we're back on the American Dream Business Roundtable, and our guest is Michael Barnes, and my co-host is Greg Noe. And you know, Greg, it's funny, but you know, you want to talk about the Excelsior Group. Well, I worked for three nonprofits actually, okay. and so I really understand the nonprofit aspect. So it must be easy for you, Michael because where some of the people or some of the companies and corporations that you worked for have a non-profit status, correct? Correct. Children's Hospital. Right. Right. So let's talk about nonprofits in Excelsior and how you two are working effectively together to help with this type of foundation or nonprofit. Well, Excelsior Institute of Business and Finance uh, was created uh, half a dozen years ago or so to help uh, entrepreneurs and small business owners. And we have put on an expo uh, at Xavier Cintas Center, and we are now currently working on what I call a boot camp class, which is a, um, an entrepreneur's uh, class uh, to discuss all of the different issues that an entrepreneur and small business owner would need in order to get up and running with their business. And we're hoping to unveil that program. We've been working on it for years now. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's due to uh, be unveiled and start with the, with the college sessions in the fall. I think it starts in August, late August. Right. Yeah. He yeah. hasn't invited me to, to do the radio and television yet, but he will. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, actually, Michael, um, what will you be doing in this in the relationship mm -hmm. to this program are you teaching in relationship to this program yes right. um, I have already given a few uh, seminars mm -hmm. sort of trying to lay the groundwork and get some attention and then during the boot camp I will be doing some more of the sessions do mm -hmm. some of the teaching um, we will also have people in the room to provide guidance okay. coaching and advising as it may be and so I'll be there for that yeah, the mentoring. Yes. yes. That's yeah. really, I think that's really important to have that, especially if you're a young business or you're an inventor. Now, a lot of companies start with inventions, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right before the show, we talked about that a little bit because I work with inventors mm -hmm. that come up with products or services, mm -hmm. right, that mm -hmm. usually call me in the very beginning of it and say, I need help. I have the great invention here, but I don't know what to do with it. So then I bring a team of people on board to help them in different respects. Okay. And that's how it works. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the reason why originally when I met Greg, I met him through my referral organization mm -hmm. and uh, he came to the meeting mm -hmm. and we started getting to know each other because he one of the people that, that I have had on our referral organization is Mark Dare. Yes. And Mark does all of my websites and everything oh, that I excellent. do. So yeah. I have a team of people that I work with. And so I really would like to ask you the key areas that you emphasize in your business and what you would do with nonprofits. What I would do with nonprofits, it's honestly, it's very similar to a for profit business. Um, a lot of people think that they're very different, but you have to bring money in, you have expenses, you have perhaps paid employees, but certainly um, volunteers. And so it's building almost the exact same uh, fundamentals. You have to get uh, control and understand how to run the basics of your business. Mm -hmm. Then you need to develop systems so that anybody can do it. In fact, it, in many cases, it's more important for a nonprofit because one example that I like to use is if you have a soup kitchen and you you know right. you think it's really easy I want to set up a tent on the corner in the city and hand out soup well it's simple in concept but you need to write down every single step otherwise one of your experienced people always has to be there but if you write down the entire system then any volunteer can come in and do it by themselves 
and it's, all, and it's almost like franchising in a sense with the book of franchise, you know, the, the instruction manual, the different steps. Absolutely. It's the same thing with a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And you have to answer to a board, usually. Yes. Well, and your accountant and your lawyer. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, there are some fundamental differences though right. in that the in the franchise model, the franchisor has gone through those steps. That's right. And laid out the, the game plan. And oftentimes uh, with a nonprofit, uh, you, the leaders uh, are left to do them th that work themselves. Sure. So that's a fundamental difference is the management of the organization. No one owns a nonprofit, right. even though we, some people will say they do, but they really can't. Uh, under the law, that's not allowed. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a fundamental difference. Uh, the other thing that I think many people make the mistake is assuming that because it's a nonprofit, you're not allowed to make a profit, <laughs> which is not true at all. Right. Um, it, the question really becomes what you do with the profit, not whether or not you make it. Right. Uh, and there are very many large organizations that, you know, the YMCA, for example, I worked with them for, for many years. Uh, they are a nonprofit. They make a, a lot of money, but it's what they do with that money. Right. Right. Uh, and the one example that I like to give, and I haven't fact checked this, so if anybody out there <laughs> wants to challenge me on this, but. Uh, my understanding is that many, many, many years ago, New York Life Insurance Company started AARP hmm. in order to, well, now most people, they recognize AARP maybe more so than they recognize New York Life. But uh, New York Life was trying to create an arm where they could sell more life insurance. That was easy. <laughs> and my understanding is to this day, if you go to AARP and you you want to buy a life insurance product, it's going to be a New York hmm. Life oh, product. Oh, yeah, that's Interesting. true. That's true. And, and so uh, sometimes the, the nonprofit uh, takes on a life of uh, more prestige than the underlying companies that, uh, that founded it in, in the first place. So yeah. another, it, another interesting fact is that many people don't think of nonprofits as doing sales and marketing. But in fact, they do. Oh yeah, we do. That's in fact, they do a lot more than most commercial businesses. And so, um, again, working with a nonprofit, it's all about how do they raise money. You know, right. they're typically, or they can't be selling per se, right. but they're trying to convince people we have a service. Not going to go to you. It's going to go to some good cause, but you right. should give us money. And so, uh, again, a nonprofit functions effectively like a business. I'm sure that there are legal differences, but definitely, but functionally. Well, and the other thing that happens is we think of nonprofits as all being charitable, the, the kind where you get a tax deduction if you donate to them, mm -hmm. but there's actually like 30 different kinds of nonprofits and there's only one of those 30 that uh, where you can get a tax deduction for contributing to it. Uh, your local golf course might be set up as a nonprofit. Hmm. Your chambers of commerce, your right. government units, they're all set up as nonprofits too. And depending upon what your enterprise is, you might have some choices there. For example, if I uh, were developing an indoor farm, I could set that up as a purely profit business and uh, grow vegetables and things like that, sell them, make money. But I could also set that up as a nonprofit. I could use the, the uh, people in the community to come in and teach them how to grow things, the value of nutrition, and on and on and on. And now what we're seeing, uh, which is something very new, there's a new form of organization which is actually a hybrid between nonprofits and profits. And on that note, we're going to have to take a short break. Okay. Uh, and we'll be right back with Greg Noe and Hold That Thought. Okay. And Michael Barnes with Action Coach and Katherine Raker. And we'll be right back. And give your websites if you don't mind. It's Barnes Business Coaching, B A R N E S, Business Coaching. Com. And give Excelsior a group, please. Yeah, the website for Excelsior is the Excelsior Institute. Now, Excelsior is kind of hard to spell. E X C E L S I O R. It means always upward, by the way. Excelsiorinstitute.org. And we'll be right back 
right after these messages. Thank you.